If you have been following the sites featured on awards, you probably saw this one that one site of the day back in January this year. It had been on my to-do list for a while, but last week, I finally decided to take a crack at it. Also, it's been some time since we tackled any cool slider project, so this one gave me a reason to bring them back. To be honest, at first, it felt a bit complex, with multiple moving parts like scaling images based on scroll position, a rotating thumbnail wheel layered on top, and title updates happening in sync. But after a few hours of trial and error, I was able to put together a very minimal version of the same concept using just JavaScript and GSAP. In today's video, I'll walk you through exactly how I built it. Basically, using a custom scroll-driven animation loop, we'll move the slides horizontally in response to scroll input and calculate their position and scale dynamically with JavaScript, making sure the center slide always returns to its normal scale, while the surrounding slides scale up or down depending on how far they are from the center. That's what gives it that same kind of dramatic zoom effect we saw in the inspiration. If you find my work helpful, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start with the HTML. First, I'm adding a div with the class slider. This is going to act as the main container that holds all our slides. Inside that, I'm adding a simple paragraph tag with the class slide title. We'll use this later to dynamically update the title based on which slide is currently centered in the viewport. Then right below the slider, I'm adding another div with the class thumbnail wheel. This will hold all the small thumbnail images that rotate in a circular pattern on top of the slides. That's all we need for the base HTML structure. The rest of the layout will be created dynamically with JavaScript. Next, let's move on to styling. At the very top, I'm importing a Google font. I'm using DM Mono for this project. It has a minimal, slightly technical look that I think works well for designs like this. Next, I'm doing a basic CSS reset, removing default margin and padding, and setting box sizing to border box. Then, for the body, I'm applying the DM Mono font we just imported. Images are set to cover their containers completely without stretching using object fit cover. Now onto the main slider. The slider container is fixed to cover the full screen, both in width and height, and we are hiding any overflow that goes beyond it. Each individual slide inside that is absolutely positioned, taking up around 45 viewport height in width and full height of the viewport. We are also hiding overflow inside each slide since the images will scale dynamically during animation. Next, the slide title. This is absolutely centered using transform. Styled with a small uppercase font bold weight and a black background behind the text to make it stand out regardless of what's behind it. It also has pointer events none, so it doesn't interfere with any scroll interactions. Then we have the thumbnail wheel, which is also fixed full screen, just like the slider. It doesn't accept any pointer interaction either. Each thumbnail is styled using the thumbnail item class. We give them a small fixed size and absolute positioning. We'll later update their position dynamically with JavaScript to form a circular wheel. Finally, I've added a small media query for mobile screens. If the screen width is under 1000 pixels, we make the slides wider at 75 viewport width and scale down the thumbnail sizes to fit better on smaller screens. At this point, if you open the page in your browser, you won't really see anything yet because none of these elements exist in the DOM at the moment. We'll be creating and appending them dynamically using JavaScript in the next part. Alright, let's jump into the JavaScript setup. Before we walk through the JavaScript, just a quick note. This weekend I was busy working on the website template for this month, so just to save some time on editing, I'll be pasting smaller blocks of code step by step instead of typing everything out live. Since this project is a bit heavier than usual, I've had to streamline things a little bit on the editing side. That said, I'll still explain everything in detail so you will understand exactly what we are doing, how it works, and why we are doing it that way. If you are following along and writing the code with me, feel free to pause the video at any point if you want to catch up. Also, just so you know, the code shown in this version is slightly longer than usual. I kept it that way intentionally because I wanted to walk you through every individual step clearly so you can actually see each piece in action. 
I do have a shorter version of this with some of the duplicated logic removed but I didn't use that version here because it would have made it harder to show the result of each block in isolation until everything is fully connected. So I made a few adjustments to the structure just to make it easier to show you what each part of the code actually does step by step. So I'll be pasting the code block by block just to make sure you get a clear look at what each section is doing. However, the pro members will get access to the cleaned up version inside Discord. Alright, let's get into it. Starting off with the base setup. First, I am grabbing a few core elements from the DOM, the main slider container, the slide title element that will update dynamically as the user scrolls, and the thumbnail wheel which is the container for our rotating thumbnails. Next, I am defining the total number of slides. I have set it to 24 now but you can easily tweak this later if you want to add more. Then, I am defining a constant called end scale, which we'll use later to control how much the images scale as they move away from the center. This number determines the maximum zoom effect we apply to the outer slides. Now, I am calculating a few dynamic layout values. First, we figure out the width of each slide. I am setting it to 45% of the viewport width, which gives us a nice compact look with the space for the thumbnails to breathe around the slides. Then, I am calculating the horizontal center of the viewport, which we'll use later to figure out how far each slide is from the center of the screen and scale them accordingly. We are also checking if the current screen size is mobile, basically anything under 1000 pixels wide, and we'll use that condition later when deciding how the layout or thumbnail wheel should behave. After that, I have added an array of slide titles. Each one matches an image and we'll use this later to update the title in real time as the user scrolls through the slider. For now, I have repeated the same set of 10 titles twice just to fill the full strip and keep it looping visually. Finally, I am setting up a few variables we'll need for the scroll animation logic. We have current text and target text to track the slider's horizontal position over time. Current text is the actual position on the screen and target text is where we want it to move toward as the user scrolls. Then we have a flag called a scrolling which helps us detect if the user is currently scrolling and a timeout called scroll timeout which we'll use to reset that flag after a small delay. And lastly, there is an active slide index which we'll use to keep track of which slide is currently in focus so we can update the title and thumbnails based on that. That's the full setup of all the base elements and variables. Next, let's move on to generating the actual slides. Instead of hard coding each one in the HTML, I am using a loop to generate them automatically. Inside the create slides function, I am looping total slides times but I am multiplying that by 3 so we actually create a longer strip of slides that we can loop visually in both directions. Inside the loop, I am creating a new div and giving it a class slide. Then I am creating an image element and calculating the image number using the modulo operator so that after every 20 images, it loops back to the first one again. This way, even if we create 60 or more slides, we are just repeating the same 20 images in sequence. After that, I am appending the image into the slide and then appending the slide into the main slider container. Now, once all the slides are created, we need to position them properly on the screen and that's where the initialize slider function comes in. First, I am selecting all the slides we just created, then I loop through each one and calculate its horizontal position using the slide width and its index. We are setting its X position using GSAP, so each slide is placed next to the previous one in a horizontal strip. After that, I calculate the center offset, basically figuring out how much we need to shift everything so that the very first slide starts just off screen on the left. Then I update both current text and target text with that offset, so we start the animation from the right position. Once both functions are ready, I call create slides to build the layout and then initialize slider to position them in place. If you check the browser at this point, you should see a long horizontal strip of images flowing left to right but nothing is moving yet. We'll bring it to life in the next step when we start handling scroll input. Now that the slides are in place, we'll make them respond to scroll using a custom scroll handler and a simple animation loop. Inside the scroll handler, I'm capturing how much the user has scrolled. Since different browsers provide that value differently, I check all the common properties just to make sure it works everywhere. Then I subtract the scroll value from our target X, which basically shifts the destination we want the slides to move toward. Next, I set a scroll flag to true and clear any previous timeout. Then I start a short delay. Once that ends, we reset the scroll flag. That part isn't required for the scroll itself, but it's helpful if you ever want to trigger other things while scrolling is active. Now let's look at the animation loop. On every frame, I'm using the current X position toward the target X. That's what gives us that smooth motion instead of a direct jump. Then I calculate the total width of all slides combined and use that to loop the slides infinitely. If we scroll too far in one direction, we just wrap everything around so it keeps going. After that, I go through every slide, calculate its new position based on the index and the scroll offset 
and update it using GSAP. That keeps all the slides moving together in a continuous strip. At the end of the function, I call request animation frame to keep the animation running. To tie it all together, I've added scroll event listeners, one for modern browsers and one fallback for older ones. And just in case the user scrolls the actual page, I also force the scroll position back to the top so everything stays locked up in place. Finally, I call the animate function once to start the loop. If you preview it in the browser right now, you will see the slides moving smoothly left and right in response to scroll and looping seamlessly in both directions. Next, we'll take this further by scaling each image based on how far it is from the center of the screen. Now let's add the zoom effect, the part where each slide scales dynamically based on how close it is to the center of the screen. We are doing this inside the same animation loop. After updating the slide positions, we loop through all of them again to calculate their distance from the center. For each slide, I start by figuring out its horizontal position and then calculate where its center point is on screen. From there, I subtract that from the center of the viewport to get the distance. The farther away a slide is, the more zoomed in it becomes. The one closest to the center stays at its way scale. To control how the transition feels, I divide the distance by an outer range. In that case, I'm using the slide width times 3. Then I clamp that result between 0 and 1 so it's easier to work with. Now, instead of scaling linearly, I'm using a custom easing curve. This makes the zoom feel more organic, not too sharp or not too soft. As the slide approaches the center, the scale eases down. As it leaves the center, it eases up again. Using that eased value, I calculate the scale amount. The one in the middle stays at scale 1. The ones farther away increase gradually up to the end scale we defined earlier. Finally, I select the image inside each slide and update its scale using GSAP. That's what creates that continuous stretch and squash effect as the slides move. Once all the slides are updated, I call request animation frame again to keep the loop going. So now, when you scroll through the slider, you'll not only see the slides moving, but also scaling in and out based on where they are on the screen. It gives the whole thing more energy and depth, where the center slide feels more grounded while everything else flows past it. Next, we'll bring in the rotating thumbnail wheel. First, I'm creating all the thumbnail items dynamically using a loop. For each one, I calculate an angle based on this position in the sequence. So if we have 20 thumbnails, they'll be evenly spaced around a full circle, which is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Then I set a radius value based on whether the screen is mobile or not. On mobile, the radius is smaller so the circle stays compact. On desktop, it's larger so everything has a room to breathe. Using that radius and angle, I calculate the x and y position for each thumbnail using basic trigonometry, cosine x and sine for y, and offset them so the circle is centered in the viewport. Once I have the position, I create a new thumbnail element, give it the proper class, and store a few values as data attributes. These include the index, the original angle, and the radius. We'll use all of that later when we rotate them in sync with the scroll. Then I create the image for each thumbnail and set the source based on its index. Each image matches one of the slides. After that, I append the image inside the thumbnail and the thumbnail inside the thumbnail wheel container. Before adding it to the DOM, I set the initial x and y position using GSAP. I also define the transform origin as center. This helps if we ever want to rotate or scale thumbnails later on. Once the loop finishes, we have a full circular wheel of thumbnails positioned around the center of the screen. Now to make it dynamic, I define an update thumbnail items function. This one gets called every frame inside the animation loop. First, I calculate how far the slider has scrolled in terms of the exact slide progress. Based on that, I figure out the current rotation angle of the wheel. I'm rotating the wheel in the opposite direction of scroll to give it that smooth orbiting effect. And I offset the whole thing by 90 degrees so the topmost thumbnail starts straight up. Then I go through each thumbnail again. For each one, I grab the original angle and radius from the data attributes and I add the rotation angle to the base angle that gives us a new angle for where this thumbnail should be placed on the circle. Using that updated angle and radius, I recalculate the x and y positions just like we did earlier. Then I use DSAP to update their positions on screen. The result is that the entire wheel rotates gently as you scroll. Each thumbnail moves along its circular path in sync with the scroll but layered visually on top of the main slider. At the end of the animation loop, we call update thumbnail items. So this update happens continuously as you scroll. So now the scroll is not just moving and scaling the slides. It's also powering a rotating thumbnail wheel that adds an extra layer of motion and dimension. Next, we'll make one more enhancement. We'll update the title text based on which slide is currently in the center. 
So basically we are adding two more features, one to update the slide title based on which image is centered and another to handle screen resizes. Let's start with the title update. This happens inside the same animation loop we have been using. As you loop through each slide, I'm also checking how far it is from the center of the screen. The slide with the smallest distance is the one closest to the center. So as you go through the list, I store whichever slide is closest and keep track of its index. At the end of that loop, I take that index and use it to grab the right title from the list we defined earlier. Then I simply update the slide title element with that value. This makes sure the title you see on the screen always matches whichever slide is in focus and it updates automatically as you scroll. Right after that, I call the update thumbnail items function like before so the wheel keeps rotating in sync. Then I call request animation frame again to keep the loop running. Next, I'm adding a resize listener just to make sure the layout stays consistent across different screen sizes. Every time the window is resized, I check whether we are on a mobile screen or not and recalculate the slide width accordingly. I also recenter the viewport so scaling and layout values stay accurate. Since thumbnail positions depend on screen size, I clear the existing thumbnails and regenerate them. And finally, I reinitialize the slider to update all the positions based on the new dimensions. With that in place, the entire experience stays responsive and everything from slide scaling to thumbnail rotation continues to work smoothly on all screen sizes. And that's it, we now have a full scroll driven experience with a horizontally looping slider, dynamic scaling, a synced thumbnail wheel and a title that updates based on the active slide. Hope you found the video helpful, see you in the next one.